All right, ladies. So we've been waiting for this moment for a very long time, and it has finally arrived. And here are some of the things that I want to tell you, ladies. So first, we just went live on uh, Facebook. But I want you guys to know that uh, tonight, what we're going to discuss, the title of this talk that we're going to have is called uh, Sisters, How Y'all Feel. And I got that from Erica Badu, of course, you know, because I like the way I like the way she goes ahead and check in on uh, the women as well as the men. And tonight I bought three dynamic women to help do that check-in. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff tonight. And my goal for tonight is to get you women, specifically African-American women, to see and understand and know just how powerful you are. You are allowed to be vulnerable. You are allowed to go ahead and take care of you. You are allowed to use this space tonight in order for you to know and understand and get your questions answered on the topics that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about trauma and well-being. We're going to talk about money, mindset, well-being, movement, health, all of those things we're going to touch on because those are the things and the issues that is affecting us and our community and specifically us women. So tonight, just to go through it really quick, I have Dr. LaToya Wiggins. And Dr. LaToya Wiggins is the CEO of She Is Nourish LLC. She is a wellness coach and a self-care strategist for Christian moms, okay? And uh, I'm gonna let her go into really what she do as we go along, but I wanna introduce you to all of the women on the panel. The next woman that I have is Miss Petrina Dixon. She is the money lady, as you can see. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about money. We're gonna talk about mindset. We're going to stop saying we are broke and start to figure out how you can start to change your mindset to start to create wealth. And then you guys know we have Tiana Christine. She is like our homegirl now who, uh, who did our amazing yoga at our selfish retreat. She shared her story with us. She gave us some of her amazing wellness cards. And she is here to remind us of how to take care of ourselves, how to really tap into uh, our mindfulness so that we'll be able to experience and have that little bit of peace that we so desire and look for after we had a hard and busy day. So ladies, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for having this conversation. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to start out this way since, you know, we're all on, right? Because I, I wrote my notes and, and this is what I have. Trauma today is a buzzword, right? We hear it everywhere. Eight out of, a, eight out of, a, out of 10 Black women have experienced some form of trauma. We're leading in anxiety, depression, diabetes, heart disease, and being a strong Black woman is seen as a cultural icon. Can you ladies start out uh, uh, and explain what this whole strong Black woman thing really means to you? And do you think we still should carry this title in this day and age. So I guess I can go first. So, hey, everybody, again, my name is Dr. Latoya Wiggins and I'm a self-care strategist. And for me, I've always looked at a strong, the definition of a strong black woman was someone, you know, black woman, we can do it all. We can do it with a smile on our face. And anything that we want to get done, we're going to get done because we're strong. But it's definitely time to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. We are already superwoman, but 
I always tell people, if you look at people like Superman, Wonder Woman, they don't fight battles by themselves all the time. You have to have help, some kind of support. Mm -hmm. They recharge. When you're not recharging, you're going to get sick. And that's when the mental issues come up, you know, come about, the physical issues come about. And then you can't save anybody. <laughs> if right. you're sick in bed, if you're in the hospital, if you're in in the uh, mental institution or worse in the grave. So it's really time to let it go. We had to be strong at one point. You know, our, our ancestors, it stems from slavery. We had no choice back then, but we're not still, we're not living in those times anymore. So why are we still living like we're in those times? It's time to really nurture ourselves and really be in the best health that we can be. And to me, that's super. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, my name is Petrina. I'm known across the social uh, streets as the It's My Money Lady. Um, it's My Money is my trademark brand. So I'm really excited about that because that is an asset um, when you have uh, something traded, uh, marked like that. But um, I agree with everything uh, that was said. Um, so it's interesting because I was just, I just was in a conversation with someone or a group of people and we were talking about strong woman versus independent woman and versus somebody having independence. So, um, you know, so I can only talk from the chair that I said, sit in or have sat in. Sat in. Um, I used to be a single mom for a really long time. Now I'm a married woman of 10 plus years. So I feel like I was, um, I, I put on that, I call that armor and became that strong woman to your point, um, doctor there is that I had to, I had to take care of home. I was the head of the household. I needed to make sure that everything was taken care of. Um, now in the chair that I sit in now, I would say I'm a successful woman who um, knows how to know, ha, st stand strong, um, but definitely have a head of household and my husband. You know what I mean? So I, I think I I don't like using the word independent. I like using the word that I'm successful. I have, uh, have become to appreciate the things that I've accomplished in life. But I also know that the head of my household is my husband. So I, I think, um, so I think of it you can define me in some do as a strong woman. Um, I, I like what you said um, because I was guilty of this until about three years ago where I didn't take time for myself. I, I, I felt like I always had to, that I, when I was working or doing things, that's what I needed to and always needed to do. But I've had um, in the last three years or so, had a profound appreciation of self-care. Uh, um, I learned to stop at a certain time, regardless, regardless of the check, regardless of the request, um, whatever I can give you at 6 p.m., you can wait and get at eight, uh, 9 a.m. the next morning because probably you're not looking at it at that time anyway. So, but those were, those were things that I put on myself. Sometimes the receiver wasn't even expecting that way, but I thought I needed to complete things as quickly as I got them in so they can be done. But then it was really robbing me time to spend time with my family, to spend time with my husband, to, you know, whatever it is that I wanted to do. So I guess I'll say that I think as, as we, as our lives evolve, our definition of that term becomes different depending on your life. That's what I will say that at least that happened for me. And um, self-care helped me into what you were saying, appreciate that if I don't put my own mask on, um, how can I help others and, and serve the community like I'm serving them and from a financial perspective? So that's what I would say. I know it's a long way of saying you know, answer there, but um, it, it's just interesting because I just had this conversation not too long ago. Okay. I love it. I'll introduce myself as well. My name is Tiana Christine. I am a yoga and meditation teacher and I will say that strong black woman, how we feel, this has been, of course, and everybody has said it, um, Petrina, you said it, Dr. Latoya, you've also said it, we've always been the people that we hold all of the, the struggles, the cares, the responsibilities of the home, of trying to make sure that everything goes smooth. We are the project managers for everybody. However, when we get to that point of we need to take care of the children, the husband, the finances, the cleaning, all the things, it's a thankless job, one. 
So the strength comes in. Nobody's going to be like, oh, thank you so much. Maybe yeah. Mother's Day, you'll get that thanks. <laughs> um, but that's about it, right? You know, it's it's a thankless job and one that people don't really uh, appreciate or value uh, because some people outside looking in be like, you've been home all day. What you doing? That's right. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. You know, so those things happen. And then not only taking care of all the other outside things, but Petrina, like you said, putting on your mask first, we have our own internal things and desires and wishes and dreams and traumas that we're going through. So then it's like, okay, we have to take all those things. We have to push them down because we still got to get stuff done. But it's when we talk about that strength. And to me now, the strength is not just saying, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep getting up every single day. I don't need your help. I'm independent. I can handle it. The strength to me now is speaking up and actually saying, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And COVID, I will say, is one of those things that has made it uh, a little bit more mainstream. I'm not even going to say uh, acceptable, but ma more mainstream that getting a therapist, getting help, seeking out yoga and other ways of being able to find an outlet, find a release that has come out of COVID. And I will say that's one of the best things to have come out of COVID. We have now opened the door to start that conversation where before it was kind of like, I got to keep pushing, you know, I'm independent. I ain't got no worries, all that stuff. No, it's really about saying, all right, let's get to the root of this. Let's unpack a few of these things. Let's put some of these bags down, right? We talk about uh, Erica Badu. We got to put down some of these bags, bag lady, because yep. it 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 weighs on us. Not yeah. only from just we have all the things to do, but it starts to affect our health, mental health, and our physical health. Women are dying of strokes and heart attacks, and it's large numbers because of all the stress that we carry, all the trauma that we hold. So we definitely have to change that narrative of strong Black woman who just takes on everything that can put down some things, that can be vulnerable. There's there's strength in vulnerability. So that would be my answer for that. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to be that woman who who is listening, where she's saying, you know, I'm not allowed to be tired. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not allowed to be tired. You know why? I'm a single mom. I got three kids. I'm, I'm living in this house or apartment. I have my job. I'm trying to get by. I need help. I got the kids. The kids are doing what they can. I'm stressed out. I'm burned out. I'm, I'm making ends meet with what I have. And so I'm not allowed to be tired. I'm not allowed to go ahead and take this me time because you know what that me time takes away? It takes away all the other stuff that I have to do. Then I got to go bust my ass at a job that I really don't like. But if I don't do it, right, then my kids are going to be in a, a in a certain position where I don't want them to be in because I want them to have a better life than I did. Right. And so, like all of you ladies said, we push stuff down. We 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 make excuses. We tell ourselves that it might work for you because you got married and you got help. It might work for you guys because you got the proper education and you have a good job where the struggle for you is not the same struggle for me. What would you say to that woman? Because she's the one who's listening, where she feels like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, y'all. I hear you. But when I look at my life, I, don't, I can't see how I'm going to do this self-care. Not with these kids and, and my kids. I'm trying to figure out, especially if my kids are giving me problems. Hmm. Because that's, that's real. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can speak on that. Um, just like Katrina, I used to be a single mom. So I am married now. I was a single mom for um, six years. And I found myself practicing self-care before, from what I know of, it was even a buzzword, but it was like, you're struggling, you're struggling. Some days you are dreading getting up. 
And that's when I had to start checking myself and telling myself what I needed. So I might need to take this mental health day. You know, you got the PTO, use it, <laughs> you know, um, leaning into community, you know, so as a single mom, okay, lean into your friends, rather they have, you know, their friends um, back then I had some friends who didn't have children. I had some who had children. Okay, let's get together. <laughs> Our children are playing and now we have that time to, you know, let them do their thing while we catch up, you know, like all those different things are self-care. And that actually takes me to another point. It's really defining what self-care is. A lot of people, they're thinking, oh, I need to go get my hair done, my nails done, a massage, had the hot bubble bath. All those things feel good, but they are, they give you that temporary happiness, right? Or a temporary stress reliever. We have to start realizing that self-care is simple things you can do throughout the day, every single day, even if it's as little as five minutes. So maybe you need to wake up a few minutes earlier, you know, before the kids wake up so you can actually prepare yourself for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's making sure that you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep as a grown woman. You know, that doesn't count if you have a newborn, but even with a <laughs> newborn, you know, making sure that you're actually resting when they're resting instead of thinking, mm -hmm. oh, as soon as they're taking a nap, let me go clean. You know, it's being okay with actually resting because <laughs> that's, you know, you all mentioned that sometimes we act like it's bad to rest. You know, sometimes it could be just taking a few, um, you know, it's actually incorporating kids, you know, so if you have kids, self-care doesn't have to be complete alone time, quiet time. Yes, it's good to have it, but what can you do? It's actually funny. I just recorded this yesterday. I um, released a podcast episode talking about self-care with um, your kids. Find things that nourish you and your kids. It doesn't just have to be, I have to watch Paw Patrol or play on the floor with Barbie dolls and I really don't want to. Of course, we're going to do those things. That's part of the sacrifice. But there are things that you and your kids enjoy. So why not do those things that nourish you both? You know, you're teaching them about self-care. You're teaching them boundaries. You know, mommy just need five minutes. Just give me five minutes. That's all I'm asking, you know, or finding time to maybe hide out in the bathroom if you need to. <laughs> Play a game of hide and seek when you're really just having that quiet time by yourself. Be creative. Just like, you know, we were children, we had to tap into that creativity, coloring, journaling. There's so many different ways we can actually practice self-care. So don't think about it has to be this big extreme thing or I need a whole self-care Saturday or self-care Sunday. Take those different few minutes throughout the day, even just like at work taking an actual lunch break instead of eating through your lunch break. I mean, not eating through your lunch break, I'm working through your lunch break, you know, yeah. which I was guilty of a lot of times. I'm eating and typing, eating and typing, mm -hmm. never actually took an official lunch break, you know, getting outside from some fresh air, all those things, they help, you know, so it's really about finding what really kind of brings you some release, some peace, some joy throughout do the day. Do you remember, I, but do you remember your, your grandma? I know it was mine and like your aunt how they would be the first ones up in the morning mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. and they were the first ones up in the morning and they did their devotional mm -hmm. before everybody mm -hmm. right and then they, they read their scripture they went to the bathroom by the time you got up they were fully dressed mm -hmm. they were cooking they were asking you what we, what you going to do and and when you going to get a job and all that stuff <laughs> right they did all that. And I, I, I know now that that was their time for yeah. their self-care. Right. right. Where we just thinking, you know, mom, auntie, grandma, they get up so early making noise or the light is on, come turn the light <laughs> on in the room. Right. And you like, why are you, you know, why are you up so early? Because mm -hmm. that was their time. Yeah. yeah before they had to deal with you, before they had to deal with the world exactly. and everything in it, right? Yeah. How did we lose that, y'all? What happened? <laughs> that is Back to what we said that. earlier, just have to do everything. And, and I, what Dr. Latoya said, I love that because I think the definition, well, it seems like you see the hashtag of self-care when somebody's getting a mani or a petty, they think that like that, those are forms of self-care, but maybe that's not 
in someone's budget to be able to go get a um, half a spa day or something mm-hmm. like that. I know for me, at least, like I, I am definitely a morning person, um, but a couple of things that I altered, even being a morning person, I used to be that one that had that alarm clock that would go off at 530 six o'clock, whatever that is. But I literally didn't get out of the bed till seven o'clock. So the alarm, I snooze, 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 snooze all the way until whatever time I got up. Um, I saw this. I don't know if I heard it on a podcast. I saw it somewhere else. It's like, why are you robbing yourself of that hour or so of sleep by, you know, having it interrupted, keep snoozing, just put the alarm on for the time that you actually want to get up. That made a huge difference when I actually implemented that. So when it went off, it was time to get up, but I gave myself that hour and 15 minutes back uninterrupted. So that was one thing. Secondly, I used to, you know, jump up. I work from home. So I used to just go to the computer, hit it to see what was going on and then go get my coffee. Now I go downstairs, I make my coffee, I sit on the porch, sit at the breakfast nook, whatever, and just take that peaceful time and have defined in myself that 8.30 to 9 is my time. Like I'm not looking at my phone, but if I want to, I can, but I put it down. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do for the day. I am doing that, but it's not um, interrupted. It's not um, taking in stuff from others. It's just me with me. And that is help that has been helpful to me. And then I, Dr. Latoya also said about the lunch, I was guilty of that. Um, I, I'll go grab food and I'm eating it or not, right? Just go through the whole day and not eat until dinner. I literally consciously have a um, slot on my calendar to walk away from my desk. Even if I don't eat, I am walking away for a half hour and sitting out on a front porch, whatever it is I'm doing, saying hello to my neighbors that are walking. I should be walking with them, but I'm not doing that. That's another topic for another day. Day, but at least I'm walking away. Get it, Tiana. <laughs> on the porch, getting the fresh air. Even when the weather is not ideal, I am still going outside. If I'm not sitting on the porch, I'm still getting some what I call vitamin D. So those are a couple like ways that you can add in self care that don't don't cost me anything because I'm eating the coffee anyway. The porch is the porch. So if you don't have a porch, I happen to, you know, live in a home with a porch. If you don't have that, just going outdoors, you know what I mean? Or going into a room that doesn't have the work, doesn't have the TV that you just have whatever time to yourself. Maybe it's journal, whatever it is that you like doing. I know you mentioned color, coloring, adult coloring was really popular or have become really popular because of the pandemic. That's another like stress reliever. I know a lot of uh, therapists that use that. I know people that have created them because of uh, their uh, from a therapeutic situation. So there's many ways. It's the definition, and and one of the one of the things based on what I do from a financial perspective, sometimes it's the weight of needing to take care of things from a financial standpoint that you feel you got to work because if you don't, you can't pay the bills, you can't take care of the kids. So that's why I work with people to help them. One, if you just don't have enough, that's one thing. But finding Um, um, opportunities, I'll call it, within what you make to reduce what you're spending on so that maybe that will relieve some of your stress that you feel, okay, I got to do this or I got to do that. I can't take that PTO day because I need those extra hours. I need that overtime. So it's just rethinking or thinking differently about how you can operate within the space that you're in. And if you're actually finding that you don't have enough, you know, work in ways that you can monetize your own skill sets. So that's, that's, those are the things that I I think people should think about when, as you listen into this, not, I'm not, I, I, completely understand where you are because I was there if you're the woman that she just described. Um, But now, you know, hopefully listening to this, you're open to looking at things differently to help you if you're at that space. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I'm sitting here thinking about all the different ways that I practice self-care for myself. And I will say this, when it comes to getting that quiet time in the morning, I still honor that. I still hold true to that. Um, I love that I'm a morning person and my husband's not a morning person. So I still get that quiet time. And I use that quiet time to get in a yoga practice, to do some meditation, to just plan out what I'm going to do in my day and just not talk to people. And there's so many times where we feel like, okay, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Everybody says that, but those are the same people that's on Instagram, on TikTok. They tell you what shows they watch, watch. all this stuff. (laughs) So it's like, 
you do have the time, but you just spend it on different things, right? So right. if you want to say, okay, like uh, the same thing that Petrina said, if you want to say, all right, I'm going to snooze this alarm for a whole hour, or I'm just going to get this better quality of sleep, and I'm going to make sure that I go to bed at a certain hour so that I can wake up refreshed because it's a it's an ever-evolving domino effect. If you go to bed late and then you have to wake up and you're tired, then you need coffee and then you're overstimulated. So you're up late at night again, and then you're tired and then more coffee. It's just, it's a constant battle. You have to break the chain. So if you could take you, I I will tell um, Miss, Miss, and I'm not going to say her name. I don't want anybody phones to go off, but mm-hmm. I will say to Google or the other one, wake me up in 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I will take me a 13 minute nap. I will put my eye mask on and I will take that time. So finding out that little white space in your day of when you can step away and Petrina said it best. And that's something that I do. If I find like little gaps in my day, I will walk away from this desk. I will go take a a walk. I will go take a nap. I will do something that's going to be helpful for me. And when you think about self-care, it's not always that spa day, get your nails done, right? Like Dr. Latoya said, it can be as simple uh, as I have five minutes before this next thing. I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to (sighs) just... And I'm going to breathe. And that don't cost you anything. You don't have to have any special apps, tools, lights, chairs, mats, none of the things. It's just simply taking a breath. There's so many times throughout our day that we transition, 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 and we don't actually create just a couple of breaths in between the next thing. So I invite you, even before you context switch, even out of this call that we're in now, before you go on to the next thing, because it's so easy, we close the laptop down, we're like, all right, next, next, just take (laughs) a second, just just take a breath and see if that doesn't change your mood and change your, your whole mind just will come down a little bit and like, okay. What do I need to do right now? And I say this to myself all the time, especially when my mind is going a million miles a minute. I just say, okay, what do I need to do right now? Mm -hmm. And then I can start on the next thing. But it's just those little transitions. Before you get out the car, take a second. I be in the car sometimes just taking my sweet time. I do too. (laughs) I do too. (laughs) Yes, you need it. You need it. Now, of course, when you're in a safe space, because I know they say women don't stay in the car long. So you also Mm -hmm. have to make sure you're in a safe space. But when I get home and I know I'm I'm in a safe space, I I sit in the car for a second. I give myself that little opportunity just to transition for before I do the next thing. So yes, it's good to have the, the all the little pampering things. But just break it down to something that you can do anytime throughout the day. You don't need anything special, anything fancy, just simply taking a deep breath. And we don't even realize how often we don't even take deep, full breaths. We're always just shallow breathing. Yep. Yep. Shallow breathing. Yes. And, and so what we learned so far, ladies, is that in order for you to really start this journey that you want to be on of transformation, you have to recognize that where you are right now, you have to be able to find that little peaceful time because I'm a shift so you can think, so you can dream, so you can become aware of the things that's going on around you and you can start to make decisions about you, your family, your life, your career and everything. But it's it starts with that, right? It starts with that. And, and now knowing that we can learn how to do those things, I want to be able to, to, to change, right? I'm tired of living the way that I'm living. You guys told me to breathe. You told me to connect with myself. 
now that now that I'm in a situation where I am doing that, I'm starting to see and understand that I am affected by things that happened to me, right? I am sitting here and, and I know that the reason why I can't move is because I'm still angry. I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know if I like me, right? And, and, and most of us as Black women, we, we run in so hard not having that time and, and all the traumas that we've been through, we don't even know how to start doing that. And, and what I'm coming to, ladies, is that whole part of loving yourself and having that self-love. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't know what it is because of the traumas that happened to us. We don't even know what love is, right? So now that we breathe and we do become aware and we look at ourselves, we don't like what we see because it because it always start there. We don't like what we see. How do we start to transition that? Hmm. Yeah, I feel I like it's say... it's those. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like it's those baby steps that we need to take. We once we open up. And I like to think of some of our trauma as that closet that is just filled to the brim and you open it and you put something in and you shut the door really fast because you know that if you open up that door, all the things open. that are going to come out, right? <laughs> it's just going to bust and, wide open for real. Yes. <laughs> and we may not be fully prepared for that to happen. We, we, and, and just like you said, now that I have done the breathing and I see myself and I don't like what I see, well, now it's time to start unpacking that. And that happens even with yoga. A lot of people, self-included, cry sometimes during a yoga practice. And it's something that you can't, you don't even know where the tears are coming from. But again, it's that door starting to creak open. You're starting to open up and that's when it's time to say, okay, I need to take this a step further. I need to talk with somebody about how I'm feeling. I need to work through some of these ways of how can I be able to positively have this change and we can't always do it alone. So that's when you have to say, all right, it's time to take this to the next level. It's time to talk with somebody who can really be able to help me to unpack these things. Cause sometimes things are buried so deep and oh, you bring it up and then you're like, okay, you didn't open the floodgates now. Mm -hmm. You really want to be able to, to have somebody who who knows what they're talking about and knows what they're doing to be able to help you in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think, you know, we, we started this with I'm um, strong woman. Right. And I, I think all of what all of us said there leads into this one. Um, we can't continue doing things over and over and over and expecting different results. We all know what the definition of that is and know that it's okay to not be okay, right? It is okay to not be okay. And you don't have to share that on Facebook or wherever. If you go in your secret corner, if you believe in prayer, you pray. If you want to talk and or uh, no and, I should say, you know, have that one or two people that you can count on um, that you feel comfortable that will hold whatever you're sharing with them in confidence and release. Like it just is okay. Like we we just lost um my father-in-law. And when you when when all each of us got that cry out, then you can feel better. But when you're holding stuff in, it makes you, it, it actually sometimes it hinders your health because you then you're tight. You're not as loose because you have this in and you're trying to be strong when you're really not helpful to yourself or others. So I think you need to understand that um, being vulnerable don't make you less than it actually humanizes you. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we are our sister's keeper. So, you know, it may not be that Facebook post that you need to put out there because sometimes people are harsh on there. It's somebody not, not, uh, what I call it, Facebook friends, followers, or foes. I'm talking about your real friend that you can reach out to. And <laughs> 
excuse me, and share, but also be, be that person someone can share when they're going through something as well. Excuse me. Someone else can go ahead right now. I can go. I like that, um, you know, you were mentioning, Gloria, like that, that you know, you, you breathe and now what? I kind of had that moment, kind of like with the other lady we're talking about, like instead of the breathing part, mine was that cry. <laughs> It, it started, you know, the transformation began with all the pent up stuff that I was holding inside being released. <laughs> First, mm -hmm. it was released in a bad way with me going off at my family. And then it resorted to me having my own pity party on the bedroom floor, releasing all the tears. And it's like, once the release happened, it was like, okay, now what? <laughs> Like, like you said, I didn't like this person. How, how am I going to change? Mm -hmm. And for me, that was getting out of my own stubborn ways. Stop trying to be strong, like we mentioned, and see a therapist. So around the same time that I was seeing a therapist, I was also strengthening my relationship with God, which is why I work with Christian moms. Cause I like, I can't neglect for me that spirituality piece. So seeing a therapist and strengthening my relationship at God, with God at the same time, that was my transformation. And that's how I started healing um, depression and anxiety after I had my third son in the middle of the pandemic, like we were talking about. And, you know, in the, um, I forgot one of you mentioned like um, therapy or it was something about something being very accessible now. Like the pandemic brought that, like now it's so easy to see a therapist. I don't have to even go anywhere. How <laughs> right. right the Virtual, you know, yes, like, you know, it's me. No excuse at all. I don't have to worry about leaving my kids anywhere. I don't have to worry about driving anywhere. Bam. Look, you know how we talk about like in between <laughs> transition <laughs> times. I get myself together in the morning, give me a little breather, then bam, 10 o'clock, I'm hopping on the uh, you know, the internet with my therapist. You know, it's so easy now, so it's no excuses. Um, Patrina was mentioning um, you know, having somebody can talk to. What I always tell people too is yeah, you have to find your community because even sometimes. The people I, I feel like I struggled with, it's kind of like, I'm talking to my husband. I'm talking to my mom. I'm mm -hmm. talking to my friend. But <laughs> as much encouragement, you know, that they can be encouraging, but it's like, it's not helping. It's not you helping. Know? So, and, you know, and, and, and you know, that's like, what I wanted. I that's what I wanted to get to. Yeah. Where, so you mm -hmm. got to really lean into, like you said, the, the professional person, the therapist. Yes. We you know, even, you know, I'm a self-care therapist. I want to coach. You might need the life coach. You may need to actually surround yourself. Kind of like we were talking about, um, you know, like for me, moms surrounding myself with other moms, but sometimes we're all acting like we're strong. <laughs> So you thinking this person is handling it, you know, they're managing everything well. And then you get around them having a conversation and it's like, oh, I'm dealing with that now. Or I dealt with that. Let me, you know, you have somebody who can actually lift you up. Not just, oh, I hear what you're saying, but I don't really know how to help you. Now mm -hmm. I'm leaning into people who can, like, they they know where I'm coming from. Yeah. And I can confide in, you know, confide into them and feel like I'm in a safe place. So really find your community and whatever it is whether it's mental health physical health whatever it is spirituality surround yourself with like-minded like-hearted people yeah and I think that's the biggest thing when it when it comes to that awakening is you realize where you are in your life right because everybody in your community is not doing what you're doing they're doing what you used to do exactly right yeah they're not they're not taking breaths and they're not doing all these things. They are still living paycheck to paycheck, trying to make it in and 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 you know, making sure that they can live life and just feed their kids. Yeah. So what you're saying is airy fairy. If you tell me to go take breaths and go see a therapist, I ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because my time is supposed to be spent on making sure I handle these things. And you know, the, the only reason why I speak this way is because th these are the thoughts that we tell ourselves, right? We want to change, y'all. We want to. I want more money. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do yoga three, four hours a day, right? I want to be able to be in a community where I feel happy and supported, right? And, and, and my, my, life for where I'm thinking I, I can't see it I, I'm doing what I can 
but I'm always asking myself, how do I get back here? I take one step forward, two steps back, right? And the, and the woman who's listening is saying, on this journey that I am, that I'm on right now, I want to, I'm, I'm ready. I am tired. I am tired of being strong. I am tired of these kids. I'm tired of this man or partner I'm with, right? And I want to be able to, I want to be able to get it right. To me, it's hard. You know why? Because I got this other stuff to handle first. So, you know, I don't like my mom. I don't like her. I'm not over the fact that this man left me. Right? I'm not over that. But I but I want to be. And I know the therapist can help me. And I know my friends can do whatever they're doing. Right? So the mind is confused. You see what I'm saying? The mind is confused. So here's what I would say. This is what I uh, I say. I tell my daughter this. I it, it, I practice this myself. Is control the controllable? You can only control what you do or how you react to something. Say so if you're listening to this, and the four of us are sharing various different things, and you really want to do something differently, then do it. Like you empower, you are empowered to make the change. Don't try to do everything that we said on this call today. If you do one thing differently and that you could feel the difference in that one change, then that will make you feel great. And then you do the next and then the next. Don't try to change uh, uh, everything. And no matter what we all do, we all want to see the baby steps because the giant steps forward are also contribute to the giant step backwards because you may oh. not be ready for that, that huge step. So take the baby steps. And the first thing, know that you can do it. We all here have shared, we haven't, we don't do it great all the time. And, and we still probably, mm -hmm. even though I said, I put time on my calendar, I have that coffee at eight to eight thirty to nine. There may be a day or two that I don't do that. You, but I still control that because I could have had that coffee, but I went ahead and took a call at 8.30 because I was getting paid for that. But that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm still in control of that. You have to remember that you're in control because when things crash, you have to take care of it. So you have to make sure that you you can embrace whatever may happen in life. If you are running racket, raggedy, I am telling you, you're going to eventually crash. So it's better to stop right now. Know that your to-do list don't all ha always all have to be done today or tomorrow even. There may be things that you don't need to do till Saturday. That laundry, if if you have a, um, a clean shirt and a clean pair of underwears, you can wait until three days from now. You, I mean, you know, you can wait until the next day if you have enough to last you for three days. Just because you normally do it on Tuesdays don't mean you have to do it today. So you said you have to control the controllables because some things are beyond your control, right? So instead of trying to fix those, fix those are within your control and you'll start to incrementally see that the day becomes a little bit different and then a little bit different and then a little bit different. That That's what I would add for that one. Yeah. And it's really all about knowing that it's okay to take a step back. There's so many times where we think, no, we got to keep going forward. Exactly. Progress isn't always going in that direction. It's a sidestep. It's a U-turn. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like for me, I, and it's a quote, you know, progress isn't linear. It's okay that your progress isn't going in this direction. Sometimes get off social media because we sitting here comparing, just like how Dr. Latoya said, we're talking about, oh, they seem to be in the same situation. But then when you start to talk to people and peel back the layers, all is not well. Just because you smiling yep. on Facebook, you could be oh. crying as you post in that. You don't oh, know Lord. everybody's situation. So sometimes taking a step back from social media and putting yourself out there and looking at other people, because that can be detrimental and really a start to affect your mood, your mental health, because you're like, well, they seem to have it all. They seem to be doing all this, but you don't know what it took to get them there and to keep it and all the things. So it's best to just Hey, all right, I got to take a step back. Let me do, like you said, I'm going to do one thing. And even if that one thing is 
today I'm going to get out the bed. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to take a shower. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to put on a clean pair of clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's your goal for the day. Baby steps, baby steps. If you say, okay, today I'm going to actually leave the house. Because I know for me, I work from home. I don't leave the house every day. And now that the temperature is starting to get warm, it's like, okay, Tiana, try to leave the house every day, at least walk outside. You can have that one goal and it don't have to be nothing major, right? Just like how you said, maybe you clean the house on Sundays, but Sunday you say, I'm gonna do nothing. That's my plans. I'm gonna do absolutely nothing and I'm gonna be okay with that. And don't feel like you have to make it pretty or you have to share it unless you wanna share it to say, hold me accountable. I said, I'm not gonna do such and such. <laughs> right. And you have whoever your friend group is or your, your group chat, and you can be held accountable that way, you know, take a, a step back from social media, because I feel like that is a lot of the source of people just falling into that comparison trap. A whole lot, yeah. a whole lot. And ladies, I really hope that you guys are, are taking this in because some of the points that I want you to take away is learn how to breathe and have that self-care for yourself and become aware and when you become aware, the next thing that these ladies said is seek that outside help. It's okay mm -hmm. to go ahead and get the help for what you need for you. You've been through a lot and going through a lot and still doing life, you need to learn how to process it all because that's the only way you're going to start to get on this journey to grow. And you don't have to move fast. You could run your own race. Yes. Nobody is, nobody is looking at you and testing you to see how fast you can run. Right. right. This is your life. And this is what you said that you wanted for yourself based on your dreams and your goals that you have for you and your family. And the beautiful thing about it, which all these ladies said is that you only have to do one thing a day. Mm -hmm. Do something that will move you closer to where you want to be. And those days where it just don't work out for you because it's just too much, hey, you still did something. You started to purge. You started to get yourself in a position where you can become more self-aware. Does that make sense? Yeah, you absolutely. have that ability to know that when you are on this transformation for change, you got to be able to face the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because that's the only way that true change happens. Right? That's the only way that true change happens. And so now they get that information, they know, and now they want to grow because they dream it. <laughs> right because yes. now you got that space yes. to dream I do want to get my money right <laughs> I do decide that you know what I, I I can be you know this business owner and and I can be this person that I want to be I can have that career right. now I have this thing called fear that comes in the way right can can we can we talk about the fear? Because you know we get on this journey where we can read all day and say affirmations all day and say what we're gonna do and read the Bible, go to church and do all this stuff, and we still in the same spot. <laughs> and then we discover that we are really afraid to get out there and do something because we are afraid that we're going to fail at it once we do. And guess what? If that happens, then you do the next thing. So I, I'm I don't I don't know about you ladies, but I'm not going to say you're not going to fail. Here's a here's the here's the mindset. Right. Here's the mindset. What I am see you guys learn that though. Here's yeah. the mindset. I'm giving all that I have. You understand? See, with with us, especially women, right? When, when we start to dream and, and do things, we're giving all that we have. So there is no falling backwards, really. At least we don't see it. You understand? 
I hear you. So this is what I will say. Don't think of it as failure. Think of it mm-hmm. as your attempt, whatever you try, whatever you are trying doesn't go the way that you planned. Learn from that and then try the next thing so that you can take the word failure out of it. Say that it wasn't successful or it didn't go the way that you planned. You learned from that and you're going to try the next thing. So well, maybe Everything. it's the language, it's the words that we're using, because I, I can't speak for the other ladies, but all I can tell you is in my journey, there's been try agains and try agains and try the next way and it didn't go that way. Let me go this way. And let me tell you though, with that became more greater success than I imagined. My second book that I wrote, I wanted it to come out the year after. My first book was re- written in 2016. I wanted the next one to come out to set out 2017. It came out in 2021. You want to know why? Because I was going around speaking about finances. That's what the first book led to. So it took me off my game. I wanted to, I mean, off my plan, but for the better. Sometimes things are are, are some sometimes things happen because we can't see the greater picture and we right. want it to go our way. And I'm a Christian woman like Dr. Um, uh, Latoya, and I'm a true believer as what is uh, the journey that I'm on now is the journey I was supposed to be on, but I, w- I thought I had to go a different way. And when <laughs> I got out of my own way, the paths opened up much greater. So th- think I had to learn from that. I knew what not to do with the next book and things like that along the way. And the second book was greater than the first. And had it come out in 2017, it may not be what it is today because I didn't know as much as I know, knew when I put that one out. So learn from things that don't go as planned, right? Um, make sure that you look at all, all components when going into a business doing whatever it is that you want to do, that you're ready to do that. And there's, you know, that again, could be a conversation for a different day, but I don't want to falsely tell you that things are going to go exactly as planned, even if you have the best laid plan. So I can't sit here and say that. But what I can say, just like we said about others, have that accountability partner. Do what you can control is write out the best plan, be prepared for it mentally, financially, et cetera. And then if it doesn't go, look at what didn't go well and figure out how you modify and go forward. So that that's what I will say. I think um, sometimes we translate failure into us personally. And, and sometimes it may be, maybe you weren't the management type and you need a manager as a part of the business. I don't know what that is. I know I like to speak. I go, I have a podcast of YouTube. I go out and speak but organization that's not just just not me that's not what I do so I have a virtual assistant that tell me where I need to go and what to do so I'm just if that's not your skill set don't don't get so hung up on what didn't go well when it's not in your realm because that's not your area of expertise right so you have to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and I always say hire for your weaknesses or find a system to support you if you have children maybe they can um you know be a part of that but there's so many many different ways that um, that shouldn't um, prohibit you from starting. Um, and that's why I always say representation matters because you have to see and hear that you we may be sitting here today, but our stories didn't start today. Like my story has been, my story started seven years ago on this particular journey, right? So if you look at me today, you're looking at what you see today. Like look at my first episode, look at my first speaking engagement and compare it to, and, and, and I'm not asking you to compare, but you will see a different <laughs> I grew. I grew, I, I compare myself to me. Mm-hmm. What can I do differently than I did in my first podcast episode? Mm-hmm. What can I do differently when I sit here? Like I didn't always have a background. As I'm looking at this background, I'm seeing some things I can change. So you just you just keep changing for what you want to see differently. Like you can't get hung up in what you think others want to see. You have to, you have to provide value. And when you provide value, if it's a business you want, you'll have clients, you'll have clients referring you to other clients. So that, that, that's just a part of that. And I I am going to have to go soon. I'm not sure where, and I don't want to interrupt anybody speaking because I know this is going to go to a little bit longer. I'm going to say this quote in case I don't get another time to do so. And I want to say thank you for having me. And um, my name is Petrina Dixon. I'm known across social media as the It's My Money Lady on all platforms. It's It's My Money underscore. Um, And I would love for you to uh, check me out on my website as well. But this is what I will say to everybody listening. And it is the only situation that can place a limitation 
on your destination to your elevation is procrastination. So just do it. Amen. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. And, 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 you know, Katrina, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. If you do have to jump off, then, you know, that's fine. But I definitely got, you know, some, some good nuggets from you. And yes, we got to make sure we put everything in the, um, in the comments and everything so that people can follow you. So yeah, I want to, I want to continue the conversation though. It is a lot of fear, right? Mm -hmm. It is a lot of fear. And and we do the right things though, right, y'all? So it's like, where where is that that disconnect? Why do we keep getting in our own way where we're doing what you guys and what we're saying to do? Like, why can't I just break through this barrier and 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 go for it when I am breathing and praying and doing all the stuff that I'm supposed to? I don't feel different. It's really, you know, we've, we've kind of mentioned it already. It's really just taking those small steps. It's plain and simple. I always tell, you know, I always say, first, you have to give yourself permission to say yes to yourself, yes to your desires and those things you feel purpose to do. And that means you will also have to say no to some things also. So what, are, what do you need to say no to? Is it a person? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it your own limiting beliefs? <laughs> your own behaviors, those negative behaviors, guilt, shame, whatever it is, you know, you have to start saying no to those things. And then again, start taking those small steps forward. So, you know, so for example, we're talking about fear of failure. A lot of times people are saying, do it scared. And that's pretty much like what you're doing a lot of times, just doing it scared. If you're a woman of faith, I always say you're not even really doing it scared. You're just trusting in God. Mm -hmm. And it could be, you know, easier said than done but like Patrina said they're really they're lessons you know so nobody's saying go hard you know like go out there and try to do everything at once take that one baby step and learn from it we already talked about leaning into community so for example you know if I'm having some money issues then I need to go see Patrina like help me manage this thing if I want to start a new career then you may need to see a certain business coach or career coach, a success, uh, success coach. Um, Patrina was talking about uh, public speaking. That was one of the things that I feared for the longest. And let me tell you, even right now, I still <laughs> have a fear <laughs> of speaking. You know, I actually have my, my friends and um, associates, people, they're like, oh, Latoya, I always see you speaking now. How do you get comfortable with it? I'm like, uh, girl, I'm actually uncomfortable every time I do it. <laughs> yeah. But the more I do it, the less uncomfortable I get. Or, you know, maybe it's just that initial feeling, you know, like about to go out on the stage. And And then as soon as you get out there, it's showtime. Even celebrities will Mm -hmm. tell you um, that people who are singing on stage, comedians, everything, because I get scared every time. But it's not, you know, when you know what you want, you just go out there and do it. And Mm -hmm. then you still learn from your mistakes. So you may see things, they, they may not always be mistakes, but you see how somebody else does something and not that you're trying to compare yourself or um, be them, but you see things like, oh, I like that. You know, kind of like Patricia was talking about the background. You may see somebody's background. It's like, oh, I like that. I might have to look into that. You know, you're, you're learning. Right. You know, so it's never really failure. And again, I know it's easier said than done because the things that I'm telling you, I have to tell myself. Every day. That's what I always have to tell <laughs> I'm not perfect. <laughs> you know, we were talking about therapy. Initially, I saw a therapist from October, yeah, October 2021 to March 2022. I recently put myself back in therapy because I know I did not want to go back down that dark, you know, feeling like I'm in a dark place again. So while I feel like I'm starting to get overwhelmed again, let me have my butt back in therapy. But it's it's easier for me to do it this time. Before it was hard. I was being stubborn trying to heal myself and it wasn't working, (laughs) you know, so uh, you know, like now I actually feel comfortable um, doing therapy. Like even when I was doing it before, I was like, I really don't want to do this. I just know I need to. And now it's just second nature. So a lot of times you just have to keep going. Again, know that I'm not perfect. I tell you about practicing self-care. I had my off days too. 
And I had to check myself like, Latoya, you got to practice what you preach, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's not a perfect day. Patrina even mentioned that, you know, like she always sitting at 8.30, having her cup of coffee, relaxing. No, but sometimes mm-hmm. when you start to feel that stress or that overwhelm, you have to check yourself and like, you know, what did I do today? You know, like for me, sometimes I'm like, if I feel overwhelmed, I'm like, did I talk to God today? No. Okay. Let me hurry up and get my word, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Did I get some fresh air? Like, or sometimes you're trying to, you feel like you're trying to do everything. And sometimes you have to talk to yourself. Why do I feel like I just have to do this? We talked about the laundry. I love using that one because that's the part that I struggle with <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like, why do I just feel the need, you know, to like be like my mom and had the laundry done as soon as it's coming out the dryer? I don't. I got some clean clothes, so I'll be all right for a few days, you know. So <laughs> sometimes it's just really reminding yourself. I'm a, I'm like, even now, I'm still checking myself with three kids and a husband. I'm like, I want the place to look neat, like, all the time. But it's a blessing that I even have people to mess up this house, you know? So sometimes right. it's really reminding yourself. I'm like, I'm not perfect. I have these self-talks pretty much every day to keep me level-headed, you know? <laughs> it's not perfect, you know? Um, I'll also say, just giving yourself grace. That's mm-hmm. the big thing too. A lot of times you have to give yourself That's grace because you're being hard on yourself. And a lot of times we're only trying to live up to our own expectations. Nobody's, nobody's expecting you to do these things. It's you. A lot, we're pretty much our worst enemies. <laughs> True. The things we're trying to get done, it doesn't matter to anybody else but us. Yes. Grace is the biggest one. I will say we're not machines. You right. know, <laughs> we're not robots. We're people. We're human. We make mistakes, we get back up, we keep going and you give yourself the grace. You know, when you talk about failure and you talk about fear, uh, well, those can be one, you learn the lessons, right? Like Petrina said, a lot of times I have learned what not to do from just failing. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, you've had some form of failure. And you just, you have to sometimes go about it a little fearless. Now, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be scared and you have to do it scared and you got to do it anyway, uh, because you just don't know you could fell up, you know, you could just be uh, okay. Well, I didn't think it was going to go that way, but this way was cool too. You know, divine purpose. You don't know how that is going to pan out for you. And I'm reading Michelle Obama's book and she talked about fear. And she said, of course, as a kid, we were the person that we would cry. We would scream, we would holler. And if we were afraid of something, but now the adult way that we approach fear is we avoid it. We Mm. just, if it's something like, I don't know about you, I'm afraid of spiders. If I put a trash can over that spider, it's going to stay there. Yeah, it is. (laughs) I'm going to avoid it. (laughs) so I just be like I'm never using that trench again ever again (laughs) that's where that's going to stay we will avoid things that we don't want to do and one of those things like if you are a business owner and there are some things that you're just like I can't do this hire somebody Mm -hmm. because that is probably not going to be your scope of genius so outsource I will outsource something in a heartbeat that's going to take me too long to do, mm-hmm. or I'm just like, okay, I, I, I don't want to do this. And putting yourself out there sometimes is the biggest thing. Just pushing that publish button, the share mm-hmm. button. Those are the biggest things that bring fear. Like you said, getting in front of people and talking. The the It don't matter if you do it a hundred thousand times, you still can be afraid. You're still going to get them butterflies. You're still going to get it. And that's okay because that happens. That's being human. So give yourself that grace. We're not perfect people. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to do a lot of things based off of fear. There's so many things that, you know, you might've been scared to drive. You may have been scared to have a kid, but some of those things, you did it anyway. You might be scared to travel. But you say, you know what, I'm not going to live life with just all of these barriers of fear. I'm going to still live life in spite of it. So those are things that keep us going. We have people like accountability coaches or our friend groups to keep us accountable, to keep moving forward, to do things that we're scared about, especially when we say, yeah, girl, I'm going to put this business out. And then our friends come to us a week or so later, like, so you said you was going to do such and such. Did you do it yet? And we like, "Uh." Mm -hmm. you know, 
it's it's those things that just keep you accountable and deal with that fear. So a lot of times when you're scared and you're like, I don't know if I want to do this, you know, reach out to your community. Community is is my word for this year. Community mm-hmm. is so important. And you want to get people who are equally yoked and like-minded on that upward trajectory. Someone yeah. who is building and growing and we all have bad days it's okay to be vulnerable you want to dump up and not dump down Uh, that was something that was taught to me a very long time ago uh, in my early entrepreneur world you want to be able to talk about those things be vulnerable with at least somebody that you can ask questions to and bounce those ideas off and be comfortable to know that you may not always make it You may not always succeed, but you're going to learn a lesson regardless. There's going to be something to learn and know that lessons that are not learned are repeated. Come on Mm -hmm. now. That, that I know personally for sure. Okay. (laughs) I know that personally for sure. And and ladies, if you hanging in there with us, I do appreciate it because what I'm, what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm asking these ladies to walk you through the journey of what it looks like to really change and transform. And as you heard, it's a journey. You don't have to get it right, but you do have to keep going. You do have to want it, right? Because on the other side of that is what Tiana says, you live it, right? And what does living look like for you is whatever it is that you say you want to do. So that means no more putting the vacations on the back burner because you feel like you can't afford it or the money could go better use in the house or you need a new couch or, you know, it could be put here somewhere, right? No more sitting there saying to yourself, that you know you you can't have what you want because you got to sacrifice for something else everything is always a sacrifice is always putting yourself last is always somebody else before it's you and what we're saying tonight is and what we want you to follow is once you breathe and you become aware and you learn how to run your own race and you seek that outside help that you need, and you do one thing that is within your control, and you get out of your own way, and you understand that you're not perfect, and you give yourself grace, guess what you do? You live. You live. Mm -hmm. You live. Right, ladies? You live. Absolutely. Absolutely. You get to see all the things that life has for you you get to explore you get to love you get to open yourself up you get to see the world so differently and you get to see people in a different light and that's what living is about that's what loving is about that's what loving yourself is about, being on that journey to figure out what's you, what's in here, right? And, and that's what we're talking about tonight. So all of these steps that I wrote down for you, I'm going I'm to repeat it before we close, but now we're going to talk about what the other side of that is. Once you went on ahead and you gave yourself grace, now it's time to live, right? Now it's time to live. Now it's time to explore those different things. And and ladies, what does that look like? Because that's something most women can't fathom because it's not cool to go ahead and put me first. You know what I'm saying? It's not cool to go ahead and put me first where I got my kids or, you know, what does that whole living look like in your opinion? Yeah, I would say so to you know, what you were talking about when, especially moms or just people who love to care for other people, it's like, oh, I shouldn't put myself first. I heard this a while ago and it just makes sense. Like, okay, you don't have to say that you're more important than somebody else, but think about it as you are just as important as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And 
we you can't truly help somebody when you're running on e you know so mm -hmm. we talk about being strong if you're constantly running on fumes you're not really putting the best of yourself into everything that you're doing you're not you're probably giving your kids the little last little bit of energy <laughs> that you have instead of giving them the big bright joyful mom who actually has energy and is not dreading counting down the clock to you going to bed you know things of that nature so as far as living I would say it really is individualized you know what does that mean to you you know and it can just be a reflection type of thing you can write that down what does living look like to me like what if I could imagine success what does success mean to me and write it down. And when you write it down, that's when you start working towards those goals. And again, you know, we already talked about it. It's not saying that you're gonna have your ideal life tomorrow, even next month, maybe not even within a year, but I know how I want my life to look. Now, what are those small steps that I can start taking today? I want people to know I was here. You I know want how like, when you go I on a job here. interview, it's always, what, where do you see yourself in five years? The same thing. Where do you see yourself in a few months? Where do you see yourself in a year? In five years? How do you want life to look like for you? You know, and I really feel like it, that it starts from that because the way I want to live isn't probably the way either one of you want to live. They may, there might be some similarities, but they're not going to be the same. You know, so what does success or happiness look like to you? And just start from there. Write it down. I don't care if it's one statement. I don't care if it's you've got some paragraphs, a whole story. <laughs> Write it down. Just kind of brain dump it. Because a lot of times we don't even really take the time out to sit with that. I can ask somebody what they want out of life. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I've thought about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So I would say just start there. <laughs> just start yes. there. And be okay with those little milestone. So like, even when I'm coaching, I, you know, say, okay, what does success look like? Just like how you say, and success may look like this and it's different for everybody, right? Even if you're having your own business, success might be, I want to make six figures or success might be, I want to pay somebody to clean my house. That mm -hmm. can be totally different for everyone. In yoga, it may be success. I want to do a handstand and maybe for someone else, I want to be able to touch my toes. So Girl, success baby. can be super, <laughs> right? Success can be, it, it's all over the place. It's different levels when it comes to success. And you have to one, know that within yourself, but then taking a step back from there, once you say, okay, this is what I want, celebrate those little small wins throughout the way because a lot of times I will check in with clients when we're in our, our sessions and I'm like you said you wanted to get to 5,000 subscribers and guess what you started out at 20 and now you're at 500 are you celebrating that because you're still beating yourself up because you're not at 500 it's not gonna happen tomorrow mm -hmm. success doesn't happen overnight we don't get into these situations overnight so it's going to take time but we are so just programmed to see that it's supposed to happen in an instant. We don't see what happens under the hood, all the work, the dedication, the consistency that it takes to actually be able to get to that point of success. And don't keep moving the needle because mm -hmm. there's a lot of times where we say, I'll be happy when I'm successful when when I get to this dollar amount, I'm successful. And then when we get close, we like, no, 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 no. When I get to this one. So then we, we're just always chasing success and we're never feeling like we're actually like, okay, I'm happy. I'm happy about where I am because we always keep push, pushing the needle. It's okay to move that needle up, but at least be able to, once you get to that point, check it off and be like, yep, I did that. I did that. So whatever that is, just own that say this is the goal I love to do vision boards because the vision boards really help to keep things together and I can visually see what it is that I want to accomplish it may not happen this year but if I go back to one or two boards in the previous years I'm like dang I did do that right so you never know right and and if I can if I can say personally you know what living for me is is basically everything that I have now, right? Um, 
because I learned about that. I learned about that gratitude, right? Where uh, living for me is freedom. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do what I want, when I want, be able to explore and be aware, fail, pick myself back up mm -hmm. and enjoy the ride along the way right that's that's what living is for me if i if i have to say what it is personally and a lot of people say well you know uh is it the money is it this and i and i tell people all of that stuff comes yeah when you decide to finally live your life all of that stuff comes cuz you know why you're focused on you people can see it you start to attract the right people. You start to get in the right communities and everything starts to line up. Doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges. Doesn't mean that things are going to go wrong. Doesn't mean you might have to pick apart some things and let some people go. But it is, I understand what my peace feels like. Okay, peace. You understand? You know, I, I I learned how to forgive because somebody hurt me. You get it? I learned my happiness because at one point I was sad, right? But I made a choice to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I made a choice to keep my peace. You understand? Because we could choose to be peaceful. We can choose to love someone, right? We could choose to be angry. We could choose all this stuff, but I choose peace. And that's the thing that works. So ladies, when you're listening and you're saying, how do I put it all together? And, and I start living with everything that was discussed tonight. It's about what does peace and gratitude look like in your life? How is it expressed? Yeah. How is that expressed in your life? And if you can't see it now, because you got a lot of shit going on, definitely understand. Follow the steps that I'm going to repeat to you before we go. But also understand that when you get to this side where you're actually living you still got stuff both of these ladies said it you still got stuff that never goes away why because you're constantly growing everything grows and dies and grows and dies right but what is your dash going to look like for you in your life and it's not too late you're thinking you're too old or you got too many kids or, you know, you stuck with the person that you have right now. That is not true. That's a lie that you keep telling yourself. And you only telling yourself that lie is because you don't believe that you could do what you really want to do. You don't believe it. And what we're telling you is, is that it's possible, but it's only possible when you decide to take the steps, when you decide that this is what you want, that you're going to actually love yourself. So I will ask you, ladies, what does living look like for you personally right now in your life? That was my example. What are you ladies examples so that they can kind of hear more? I'm going to make sure I didn't start talking first <laughs> if I was talking over. So for me, you mentioned the biggest thing, and that's having peace. So having peace and joy for me is feeling like, feeling, knowing that I'm walking in my purpose. Hmm. So I'm having peace in my home <laughs> with my children. I'm nourishing our relationships. I'm nourishing my uh, my marriage, my friendships. I am doing what I feel called to do, which is helping other people, other moms. That's definitely what I feel purpose to do, you know, help other moms to heal what we're talking about right now. 
you know, and as long as I feel like I am doing what I am called to do, I feel like I'm living. What mm. I um, like to say often now is you're transitioning from worn out to winning. And of course, mm. winning is your definition. For me, as a woman of God, I feel like winning is, as long as I'm pleasing him, I'm winning. To me, that's living. Waking up each and every day, happy to see another day instead of waking up and dreading the day. That's what I used to do. As soon as my eyes open, it's like, oh my gosh, you, you know, I'm already dreading the day and everything that's going to go wrong. <laughs> and that's not living, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, are you surviving or thriving? I want to thrive. I don't mm-hmm. want to just be here just to be here. I want to be enjoying myself. And like you said, am I going to be enjoying my myself every single day? No, you know, life be life. In. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Am I doing things that I enjoy? Am I doing things that bring me peace? And when times are hard, am I doing things to get myself back on track instead of staying stuck in a place for too long? And then it's hard to get back out, you know? So that's really what living for me is, is just doing those things I feel purpose to do and just enjoy my time while I'm here because I don't know how long I'm going to be here you know so I want to make sure when I leave this earth I leave empty come on I'm taking I'm, 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 but I gave I'm using everything I'm supposed to get I'm using every body part every organ I won't right. be able to donate nothing <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I use it all up. <laughs> I would say that, um for me, it's having control over what happens in my day. Uh, there's so many times where life is dictated for you. And so for me, I want to be able to be in control where I make a lot of the decisions and I then say, okay, rather I want to have these interactions or I do not want to have these interactions and being okay either way. Um, I may not make everybody happy, but that's okay. I'm going to make myself happy and I'm going to be the same person regardless. I'm still going to love you and say no at the same time. So me being able to control that is really, really big for me knowing that, okay, I'm going to chart out my day. The day may not go how it's supposed to go. Cause like you said, Dr. Latoya, life be life. And however, I at least had a plan. And if that plan was to do nothing or that plan was to accomplish one or two things, then I'm good. Because for me, I feel like if I have a little bit more control of, okay, the day is going to happen like this, then I've set that intention on how I want things to go. And I'm going to focus on those things. But when I wake up and I don't really got nothing to do, I'm just out here, just, I don't even know. Now I feel like I'm not being productive because I don't have a plan or a focus for the day I feel like now I'm going to scroll on social media I'm going to start comparing because I don't have nothing else to do but having some type of plan and if the plan is you know what I'm going to watch these shows or mm-hmm. I'm going to do this that's the plan and mm-hmm. I'm okay with telling people mm, I got plans <laughs> you don't even know what them plans are look in the remote <laughs> right um, those plans are to spend time with myself and that's mm-hmm. my plan like I I love interacting with people but I know myself I need just as much time with nobody Mm-hmm. <laughs> to counteract that because it is energy that you're giving out so you need to refill recharge your your battery back up and I like to be in control of kind of what happens in my life so that's when I know that I'm feeling good I'm feeling that success and when I can say okay I'm a planner by nature so when I can go in and plan how things are going to go again God has the ultimate plan and God has already taught me that lesson. Okay. (laughs) Where I thought my life was going to happen one way and it did not, it didn't, it definitely took a whole, like it, it just, it wasn't even on the same street. I was like, okay, Lord, (laughs) wait, you just dropped me off in the middle of somewhere. Now I got to pick up the pieces, Okay, but life happens and you just got to know like, okay, from here, I start tomorrow. I start here, wherever it is. Like, I'm just going to start from here. 
it may not be the right place, <laughs> but I'm going to just start. And mm -hmm. it's all right if I got to take a pause, a U-turn, a left turn, a three left turns, end up back where I'm at. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing forward and I'm, I'm not going to give up. So that that's what I would say for that. All right. So as we close, ladies, here's what I want to do. I want to I want to recap this because I, I really want to make sure you you ladies get this, because a lot of times we we get on here and we didn't talk for an hour and a half just because it's nice. Right. <laughs> the whole point is to see, you know. Sisters, how y'all feel? If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you have anxiety, if you feel depressed, if you feel like you don't know which way you want to go, if you are feeling confused, if you're in a position where you know you want to change and you feel it and you know that there's something wrong and you just don't know how to start or, or to move, I'm going to recap everything that these ladies have talked about tonight. The first thing you do is you breathe and you become aware. Breathe and become aware of your feelings. The second thing you want to do is you want to learn how to run your own race. Be okay with running however fast you need to go. Get off of social media, like, like uh, Sister Tiana said, and think about what it is that you want. Seek outside help. We all need help. We cannot do things alone. That can be a therapist, a, a, a good confidant, someone who is uh, in the same situation or came through, not in the situation, who came through the situation that you're in now, mm -hmm. right? You want to do one thing within your control, right? Because we can only do things that we can control. Stop worrying about all the rest of the stuff that is outside of your control. You can't do nothing about it anyway. As much as you want to, as much as you want to put yourself out there, as much as you want to sacrifice in it, there's nothing you can do and be okay with that, right? Stop feeling guilty about that because the next thing that they told you is understand that you're not perfect. While you're working on yourself and you're doing what you need to do, if you can't be there for other people, that's okay. You're not perfect. Wonder Woman is a character, right? You don't have to be the strong Black woman all the time. You can be vulnerable. You can, you can put yourself out there. You could take time for yourself. And the next thing that they said is to give yourself grace while you're walking along the journey. Because you will take a step forward and two steps back. You will mess up. You will fail. But the whole point of doing this lifing, like they said, is for you to understand and know that that's what it's all about. And, and to wrap it all up, they're saying, start living and stop apologizing for it. Stop apologizing for living. Go do what you said that you wanted to do, that dream you had in your head the stuff that you said that you was always going to get done, that job that you want, the people that you wanted to connect with, that business that you wanted to start. Stop making excuses because of your fear or because you feel that is not the right time, you don't have enough money, and you feel like that this is, is just not for you. Because those are the only the lies that you're telling yourself, right? Now, these ladies are also going to tell you the stuff that they have, what they're offering, how you can follow them. And if you're ready, I strongly suggest that you reach out to them because this is where we make the steps. This is where you allow yourself to walk through your fear. And again, you don't have to take massive steps. Now that you heard 
what was that uh, Bible quote, Dr. Latoya? Those who have ears, let them hear. Right? Those who have ears, let them hear. So if you're hearing and you understand, take the information in. So we can start with you, Dr. Latoya. What is it that you have? How we can follow you? And um, how can we connect with you? All right. So I am, I made it very easy for people to find me. So I am, she is a nurse mom on everything. So Facebook, Instagram, she is a nurse mom. I have my podcast that I just started in January. She is a nurse mom. <laughs> where we talk about all things self-care faith and motherhood um and what else if you go to my website she is a nurse mom.com i have a free workbook um the busy christian mom self-care workbook and that actually really talks about a lot of the stuff that we talked about today how do i start practicing self-care you know mm -hmm. so it talks about how to get started you know giving yourself permission to say yes how to start managing your time, you know, taking those small baby steps that we talked about, how to start nourishing yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. And a lot of times we don't always know. So they're like reflection um, questions that you just write, you know, you, you get to reflect on what you need to do. And it even tells you take that one small step. All right. Okay. Look, the, wrapping it up the little kid just came in <laughs> told me look like wait a minute don't come over here <laughs> but yeah so yeah she's a nurse mom on everything on youtube also that's great for me i will say uh you can hit me up for all things yoga related if you have those tech questions especially for my entrepreneurs i also help entrepreneurs uh as well with coaching i have a group serial entrepreneur which i am definitely a serial entrepreneur uh i do yoga every saturday morning that's at 8 30 a.m eastern time a live stream yoga class on youtube yoga with tiana you can find me on my website tianachristine.com even yoga will with tiana will get you there and i also have a yoga retreat that's coming up uh may 7th through the 12th and that's going to be in the beautiful tulum mexico so you can join and take a little break and get away um, we're going to not only do yoga but we are going to go to all the different food spots that well, we are around eat. in tulum and get some local food as well so once you're there once you pay your fee Everything is included. You don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. All the include uh, excursions and all the food that comes with that is included. So hope to see you out. You can scan that QR code that's uh, right here as well, this side, and uh, you can find more information about me as well. That's me. Oh man, thank you. You said May. When is it? Seventh to the twelfth. May seventh through the twelfth. Now I can't touch my toes. Is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah. It's all <laughs> all levels. Anyone, anyone can come. Oh boy, ladies, thank you so much for doing this. You had to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, <heard> that <laughs> <laughs> I really do appreciate this because I wanted the women to come on, especially, you know, black women, to see and understand that it is possible, right? Because there's a whole bunch of talk. Like you guys, like you lady said, you got social media where we comparing, we're doing so much stuff and we're just trying to figure it out. We're just trying to figure it out. And, and the way that you do that is through people who are doing it for real, for real, and not just talking. And, I, and I'm telling you, ladies, the steps that they gave you is really how you get started and how you start to live the life that you want to live. It is no secret. Anything that's out there that tells you they can give you the secret to X, Y, Z, you'll live a better life for 24 hours, seven, is a damn lie. Because this is lifelong. Why? Because you got feelings. It took you all these years to get you to where you are right now. Unlearning and learning and unlearning and unlearning is a life journey. So. Ladies, thank you so much. Um, if you want to uh, click off, you can. I'm going to do my closing remarks and let them know about Thursday 
And I will definitely see you ladies. Thank you again. I really, really, Thank really you. do appreciate it. Yes. Thank Great you for having us. Ladies. Thank you. you. Ladies, have a good night. All right. Have Thank a good you. night. All right, ladies. So as you can see, we um we have finished our uh sisters how y'all feel. And let me tell y'all, Thursday, when we have our men, brothers, y'all are right, we have five dynamic men who are coming on to give us the real, real. And I want you guys to join one, because those men need support. And then two, um, we need to be able to listen and understand uh, what the opinions are out there. We have a actual um, police officer who's going to uh, be bold and brave enough to come on to talk about the police brutality. Um, we're going to have men to come on to talk about sexual assault, who are going to come on to uh, talk about suicide, to talk about really, really, really tough topics as it relates to men. So I really would want you ladies to come stand in the gap for them. And, and tell everybody that you know, these women were amazing and dynamic. Please go ahead and support them at least by something because that's how we grow as a community. Uh, as you guys know, we have so many things that we're doing. Um, our events and everything will be out, I believe this week or next week from what the team told me. And we're really pushing this thing. I. You guys hear me say this all the time. I love you guys so much. And my main goal is to bring you the best. Because I know if you're here, you're seeking something. Why not get the answers to what you're seeking? There's so much bullshit that's out there right now. But I guarantee you, if you hang in there, if you stay committed to your healing and your growth, you will get there. You will get there. You will find a rhythm on how you want to live your life. And I want you guys to not just focus on paying bills and, and getting by and trying to figure out how you will make ends meet. That's not life. That's not life. You're not living life. You're existing. You're existing. You could figure it out. You can. It's going to take you letting go of some of the things that you don't want to let go of. And that's, and that's hard to do. I understand. But I promise you, once you get on this journey and you heard it so many times, you will just start to see your whole life change. You will start to see your whole life change. So please like, comment, share. Uh, uh, please participate. Um, stand in a gap for the men who are coming on Thursday. They need your support, you know, so that they can feel like this is a safe space for them to talk. Um, Definitely support the women who uh, were here and, and start to participate in the things that we have to offer. So I'm not going to keep you. I love you so much. And I will see you actually tomorrow's Wednesday, right? I don't know. I don't even know what day it is, but I'll see you guys. All right. I love you.